it's essential to actually have an industrial base even though you have a population of less than 350,000 people. You saw opportunity there. Why don't you start there and then we'll get into the other pillars that you're building today, sir. I saw actually manufacturing could be really a good start for us. Uh, building materials is, uh, we are a rising country. So Russell Hema has, we have managed to become the leading actually supplier for all the Gulf states. You name any port in the Gulf, it's going to be a Russell Hema built by Russell Hema. Any port. We embarked our industrialization knowing that it's, it's an important part. It has its own unique uh, setup. And actually, we are very proud that today we have some marvelous industry that has really been set up in Russell Hema, very successful, like rack ceramic, stable rock, rock, rock. And we have actually a, uh, managed to attract major uh, companies, especially Indian companies like uh, Ashok Leyland, mm. Dabur, and even we have been recently been um, uh, interesting enough for uh, some an Indian company called Sri Cement to see Russell Khema, and they have acquired United uh, Union Cement. And so this is a proof that we are good for business, good for investors, uh, a place where you can make money. Great. Um, I took a drive recently when my wife and children came out for the spring break uh, and drove to Masandam. And then I have this fascination with ports, but I didn't realize on the far side of Rasahaima the scale of the maritime city and all the industrial base that was there. Share your wisdom if you can uh, after you built up a pharmaceutical sector after ceramics and cement. Uh, what is, uh, before we get to the tourism, what's the next industrial sector or services that you see? Russell Haima providing the potential for international investment to your home base? One of the revolutions that happened is logistics. So I actually embarked on reforming our ports. So today, we used to do about one million and a half. Today we do about 70 million tons. Oh. So that tells you an answer why, you know, it's very important for our industry to succeed, is that we have to have a very efficient port. Uh, we built uh, recently a 20 meters dra uh, draft port, but but the efficiency loading unloading that's just as important as the depth of it of a port. So we created actually industrial parks. People can't build uh, a factory on the air; they have to build it on land. So we added another one, which Rack Maritime, just by the water next to the uh, to uh, Mina Sagar. Uh, to service the need to want to have some maritime uh, investment industry next to the port. What's the strategy there uh, in terms of getting more investors in, but to make sure they have a, a good welcoming experience? The rules of development is well defined. Rule of law is not what written, what is practiced. Uh, ease of doing business. So we are embarking on what you call one rack. It's, it's an ongoing process, which we're doing, which means how many days, how many hours is going to take. And yesterday I had actually a conference with the, uh, the World Bank. This is the second time we do it. So we have done tr tremendous uh, uh, improvement over the past uh, couple of years. Mm. In terms we, of ease of doing business? Yes, sir. So we've gone from 41, I think, to 30. Wow. That's not enough for us. We want to go more further. And in the legal system, we have introduced a two-shift system. We introduced many, uh, many uh, ideas to facilitate the speed of justice and how people feel comfortable and feel you know, uh, their process of, uh, you know, uh, resolving their dispute efficiently. Every agency in the government of Russell Khema to be accountable, transparent, good governance. Good rules makes good results. Mm -hmm. So it's very important for us to make sure our government is well managed. And the only way we do it is to make everybody play by the same rules. Everybody is answerable. Mm -hmm. Everybody is measured against best practice. If that's not done, 
then people have, you know, a room for lag, lagging behind and underperforming. Hmm. Where do you get your inspiration on that? I, I know Lee Kuan Yew uh, and Singapore set the model for paying his civil servants more, uh, zero tolerance for corruption. Uh, where did you get your inspiration? Because you've been in the, the leadership position after the passing, uh, God rest his soul, of your, your father in 2010, right at the heart of the global financial crisis. Where do you get your inspiration for that model? Actually, I, uh, I take my inspiration uh, from my father, my, my family generation. I see how they've done. My Sheikh Zayed, Sheikh Rashid, I really do. I think... For me, when I look at my older generation who had nothing, and when you look, sir, at history, history is a great tutor, sir. It's a great tutor for us, for failure and successes. Took a look at what you've been developing in the tourism sector. Last year, you passed a million visitors for the first time. Yeah. Uh, incredible visitors, kind of Germany, Russia, the UK, uh, Kazakhstan. It's quite a diverse bunch. India, uh, and you want to triple that by 2025. How are you getting there? So it's very simple. Today we are in a global village. Planes, you go from LA or New York or London, and you are in, from 12 hours to 5 hours to 3 hours. You are here. We have lovely beaches, sunny, great topography. Very few places in the world you see say, this combination. Well, the sand meets the sea and the mountains, right? Yes, 2,000 meters to zero. And the sea is really nice, not cold. And on top of that, there are great archaeology. Great archaeology. We have over 1,000, maybe 5,000 archaeological sites that are available. And so it's a great, rich history. You made a phenomenal historical find of porcelain, Chinese porcelain from the Han Dynasty. Yeah. Uh, did you know, A, that the, this sort of wealth was in your soil or in the sands? And what that, does that offer in terms of potential and context and, and reviving of the Silk Road right in the backyard of Ras Haima, do you think? Yesterday I was visited by a group of a uh, team of the palace, the museum palace, uh, palace museum in Beijing. And they brought great news for me. He said, they brought some porcelain. It's actually that belongs to the emperor court. These are, at that time, apparently in China, it's not allowed for the common people to have. And so it tells you the, you know, the level of wealth that existed in Rathohim at that time. And the kind of uh, trading uh, country we were at that time, connected to China. India was known, but it's to China and to the level of relationship. Very interesting indeed. Good. Dave, do you see collaboration on the cultural front with China? We need to extend our hand to everybody. I see it's a window, an opportunity for us with China to collaborate. I see a window for us to collaborate with India, with everybody. And so this is just a, a way for us to celebrate our past our joint past. Strategically, what's the thinking here uh, about forging these bonds, even tighter bonds to the East and the trade potential for Ras Haima and the UAE overall, Your Highness? For us as a country, we believe that our true wealth is actually is building relationship hmm. with every country. China is 1.5 billion, is an important it's a number one trading country in the world, number one population-wise. So we can say what we like. It's a fact of life. And we as a country, as Emirates, we view China as an important partner in our growth. What's the aspiration to 2030, Your Highness? I believe in evidence-based policies. Hmm. So it's, I believe in induction as a way for us to build our plans for the future. So in the, mean, in the meantime, now, in, here we are constructing a vision for 2030. But I tell you what I want, sir. I want, I want our, our emirate, I want our country here 
to become a global country, a global emirate. I want our people to be global citizens. I want actually our country uh, to be the dream where people feel successful. I want actually, so you mentioned my daughter Amna. I want actually, you know, I was lucky to have some education. It's our duty to give better education to our kids. It's our duty to allow them to reach their best potential. I believe in our young men and women. I do. They are the true wealth. The only thing is we have to, as I say, throw them in the ocean, but allow them to swim, and they will thrive. I'll just give a warm thanks to His Highness. Uh, it's really a pleasure. Yeah, thanks very much.